Okay, everyone, time to start a new video. Um, as most of you that actually have watched my channel know, I got a new child, and with a new child comes new habits and new requirements for your lifestyle. And currently, the requirement is a sofa table. Um, my wife likes to sit on the sofa and she needs some place to put her stuff while she's there. And a coffee table is not really an option because we already have a coffee table in the room. It sits across at another sofa, um, so we just kind of need something portable. And luckily, if anybody watches Fisher's shop, Fisher has a great design for a sofa table. It's height adjustable so that it can be used if you're seated over the cushions or over the armrests or even over the back because it's just that tall and it's at its highest settings. So we're going to build that. Um, Right now I've got some pieces of oak. This is uh, just big box store oak. Unfortunately, I can't buy rough sawn. I don't have a planer. It's on the to buy list and eventually I'll get one that way I can break down my own rough stock and save a lot of money that way. But we'll, uh, we'll just make do with what we've got. So time to get to work. Okay, so I already broke down my boards to a rough length and now it's time to glue them side by side. Um, whenever I edge glue something I try to use dowels whenever possible. So that's me marking out the dowels and getting ready to drill them. This is a fancy little uh, doweling jig that self-centers the holes. So I just need to mark uh, approximately where they need to be and then the depth I need to drill to. And when I squeeze this doweling jig on the board, it'll self-center the hole. So this will happen on all the faces, and correction, all the edges. Make sure you have the faces face the same way and the doweling jig face the same way whenever you do this. There is a little bit of variance. And then I'm going to go into the glue up. Uh, make sure you spread the glue, no dry spots. Um, the ultimate goal is to have squeeze out whenever you uh, clamp the boards together. So all lined up, hammered in, and then I'll wipe the glue joint as the squeeze out starts to appear. And the more you clamp it, the more squeeze out you're gonna get. And the longer it sits, the more squeeze out you're gonna get. So just try to keep up with cleaning it. After I have both boards together, because I do have to make two of these, uh, I made calling boards at old scrap, and that's just packing tape. And it'll keep the boards from gluing to the coal boards and wax paper in between each board and that'll keep them from going to each other now the culling boards just keep the boards uh, flat during the glue up uh, a lot of times when you clamp boards width wise you'll get kind of a curve into them and this will reduce that or eliminate it depending on how good you clamp it after it dries, pull the boards out. I'm using a card scraper to eliminate any seams and then sanding afterwards for a smooth, perfect finish. And then we move on to uh, cutting them to their final length. I shave one end off using my crosscut sled before measuring to the final uh, length and cutting it to final length. I like the crosscut sled for this. It's more accurate than the miter saw, even though the miter saw is tuned up really well. Nothing beats a good crosscut sled. After that's done, now it's time to rip them to final widths. And I use the card scraper again to get rid of some of the burn marks um, from the table saw blade. I probably need to clean that blade or replace it. Now I'm going to tape the edge of the board that's going to go inside the sleeve. Uh, this will give it a little bit of gapping so it'll move freely inside the sleeve without too much slop. Also keep the glue from the joints from sticking to this board and gluing the whole assembly together as one. Uh, more wax paper and then kind of lay out the boards before I begin the glue up. Um, I didn't dowel this. I thought about it 
I'm going to just glue it for now. If it ends up breaking over time, I can add dowels later and re-glue it together. Um, you can never have enough clamps, by the way. Uh, when in doubt, add more clamps. And then clean up your glue. Helps reduce your squeeze out. Or help, and helps it stain easier. Now the board with the tape on, it's in there being used as a spacer right now. So that it um, spaces this board out perfectly. After it dries, remove all the dozens of clamps that I put on this thing. And I'll use a hand planer to plane it down to flush. Um, I cut these intentionally wide so that I could do this and get a perfect fit instead of where I thought it should be and then be wrong and have a, a lip to deal with. So it's planed down smooth and then a card scraper where I'll finish it off. I also did the same thing to the back side to make sure the back side is flush. So all that's done. I did drill the hole in that back piece, um, and you'll see what that's used for here shortly. Slides pretty good. So this is that hole that you saw. I'm using it as a guide. Um, this would be the hole that the dowel runs through. And there are several holes on that inside board that the dowel go through, and that's how you adjust the height of this uh, table. Now all I'm doing is scoring the surface so I know where the holes are supposed to be. And then I'll come back after I remove it from the sleeve there and drill partway through enough that the pilot hole will punch out through the bottom. I don't want to cut the hole saw all the way through, just the pilot hole. Flip her over and I can use the pilot hole as a guide and come through the other way until the plug comes out. Um, this reduces tear out. And it's much easier to get that plug out of the hole saw doing it this way. I need to add dust collection to this uh, drill press. This is a lot worse than what I thought it was. Use a round over a bit to round over all the finished edges. Uh, this will eliminate any burring. It just kind of gives it a better uh, fit and finish. And sand some more. Just trying to get that final sanding before finish. So this is where it gets complicated. Um, I need to mount this thing centered on this board. And it'll be perfectly 90 degrees. This be the upright and the base on the floor. So I had the tape down, get my center marks, and then I trace around the upright. And I know exactly where it's going to sit so that I can mark for... Uh, screws. I do want to screw this part together. It's the whole screws in this entire assembly. And that's a spring punch that I use once I have the holes marked so that my bit doesn't wander. Now I do drill from the top down and then I come back and do from the bottom up for the countersink portion. So I'll eliminate a lot of the burring and gets my holes perfectly lined up where they need to be. I'm putting screws in just enough where the tips poke out because I'm going to use them to indicate on the upright um, where I need to drill the holes. I can measure, but this is far more accurate than measuring. And here I'm drilling all the holes in, but you can't tell because I don't know how to frame a camera properly. So after it's all glued up, I will uh, screw it together. And the base is done. Just wipe off your squeeze out as you go. And I pretty much have to do the same thing. This is the top. And then the part that will slide into the sleeve. Um, I do almost the same process. I just had to move it in three quarters of an inch to compensate for the upright on the base. And I am using dowels on this portion. I'm not using screws. So I have to mark and indicate for dowels. Um, these ones have these little caps with these needles on them. And those work the same as the tips of the screws on the base. I put a hammer in and put some dimples, and I can drill out my dowels accurately there. Now, what you do need to do when you drill dowels, um, 
you need to drill them a little bit deeper than the dowel is uh, length. So if you total how much I drilled into the top and this upright piece, it equals the length of the dowel. It should have been a hair longer for glue because you see here it doesn't fit quite right and I end up having to uh, pull a file out, filing it down to get it to fit correctly. But after a couple of trial and errors, this, this does work. Now it's time for the angled braces. Um, I'm going to do a similar procedure. I'll tape and use the tape to make my marks. Um, these will also be doweled together. I probably could have been all right with just doing one dowel on each board, but in my infinite wisdom, I did two, which overcomplicates the thing. One will be fine. Now I do use tape uh, for my markings just because it's easier to pull off a piece of tape than it is to sand out my pencil marks. Same process, drill the starter holes. And then once those are done, I'm gonna put those little caps with the, the point back in and then find my center points for the cross members or for the angle pieces. And this part was kind of tricky because you can only work one direction these cross pieces at a time. So I do the part that goes on the top first and then I do the part that goes on the upright second. And when I glue it together, um, I have to do it the other way. I have to glue it to the upright piece first and then I'll set all three pieces onto the top at the exact same time. Another tip when you're doing something like this, I've got these uh, cross brace pieces marked one and two. So I get the right one in the same spot every single time. This, uh, no matter how good you are at measuring, you, you will be off a little bit and this keeps you from mixing up, getting mixed up. And there she goes, all fitted together. Time to glue it together and clamp. I didn't show the clamping I did on this because it was super complex. I had to put a block in there, keep 90 degrees and then other pieces to keep pressure on those uh, angled parts all at the same time. It's kind of interesting. So here it is fully assembled and pretty well for finish, ready for finish. I didn't show making that dowel, it's just a, a one and a quarter dowel with an old wooden wheel on it to act as a stop. So this is an important step in most of your finishing, it'll be a pre-stain conditioner. I did make the mistake when I put this on, it raised the grain of the oak. I really should have done that before I did assembly, raise the grain, sand it back down. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I was disappointed when it did it, but I just sanded the grain back down and then put another coat of conditioner on. After the conditioner dried, time for stain. Um, I use rags. I don't brush stain typically. I feel like I have more control. I can just sit there and polish it out and level it off. Whereas brushing, I always seem to leave streaks no matter what I do. I let the wife choose this color. It ended up being uh, black cherry. And it was a lot redder than what she believed it was going to be. But it's her table. She can have it whatever color she wants. Make sure you get down and tighten those corners too. So after the stain dried, uh, three coats of Helmsman part spar urethane. Uh, I should have brushed it on for a thicker finish and it's a lot cheaper, but I was lazy and just wanted to spray it. Uh, I did sand it with 320 and then a final fourth coat. Now I'm marking out for the feet, again on tape, and I'm pre-drilling. These feet nail in, but I'm pre-drilling just because I didn't want to take a chance of splitting wood this far into it. And now for a wax job. This is about a week after the uh, Helmsman was put on so it's good and cured and I'm gonna wax it give a nice protective coating and it makes the pieces slide a whole lot better against each other and uh, voila okay um, I'm complete finally so it's a uh, pig and then you can raise it and lower it 
to whatever Hank can do. So, works great. Uh, it needs broken in a little bit. The only thing I probably would do a second time is the width of this board. I'd probably just take a hair off that edge. Uh, a little tight, but it'll break in over time. Not to worry about it. So, um, I'd like to uh, thank Fisher Shop. You guys don't know him, get on YouTube, check him out. Um, you can get plans from him. I didn't follow his plans exactly. I used more as an inspiration, kind of went out on my own with it. But uh, yeah, give props to him for doing that. So uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next project.